thank you again for the time we celebrate Jesus' birth as the gift from you for salvation of our sins, Jesus as our Savior, your gift of love. Um, I pray that you would let that love shine through us as we celebrate this year and are with families and friends. Lord, I pray that you would get the glory and that we would just praise you and ask that you would be with Valerie this morning who is not here with us is sick. I pray that you would touch her and heal her and be with her where she is and comfort her and um, just uh, make Christmas special even if she's not able to be here with us this morning. And um, God, I pray that you would be with uh, Pastor Aaron's father as um, he's having ongoing health problems and um, Melissa's father as well. And uh, these other ones, Lord, that we've lifted up in prayer to you, I pray that you would just continue to work and help and heal and touch physically, you know, about Edith and her eyesight and that she's not able to be in church anymore, but God, I pray that you would be with her in a special way this Christmas and the rest of this year. And um, God, each one of us here, each one of these before me, Lord, that you would just be with them in a special way and that you would just fill them with your love and joy and the peace that comes from knowing you and the hope that we have in Jesus. And um, God, I just pray that you're to your love and all that, that peace would just just fill us completely, Lord, and that we would just worship and celebrate you this Christmas. And um, You know about everyone's family and relatives and friends here, maybe those who don't know you and need to come to know you. I pray for those ones, Lord, that um, maybe you would use this time of year that you can save people. Um, God, only you can do that, and we ask that you would save those in our families and our friends who need to come to know you. I pray that you would be with us and, and bless each one who's here as we go home from here today. And um, I pray that you would just um, wrap up this year and help us as we go into a new year, that you would be king of our lives and we'll give you all the glory and praise. I pray that you would help Pastor Aaron as he speaks this morning. Lord, speak through him. Help us to hear what you want us to hear. And um, God, to, to just open our hearts to your word. And, and as we continue in worship, God, I pray. Um, thank you for all your many blessings, for all that you've done, and uh, we ask that you be with on ha- your hand of protection beyond those who's traveling for Christmas, and um, just go with us from this place after uh, the end of our service today, and we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may go back to your seats and be seated. Thank you. So we've been going through our season of Advent, which is a season of expectation leading up to the birth of Jesus. We celebrate Jesus, um, and um, back back before Jesus' birth, they looked forward to the coming, Emmanuel's coming, and um, they looked forward with expectation to when the Savior would come, and we celebrate that he has come, and we can know him, and then we also look forward to when he comes again to set all things right, and so we've been lighting our candles for Advent um, uh, one for hope, the hope that we have in Jesus as our Savior, and uh, one for um, joy, the joy that he can bring in our life for knowing him, uh, the peace that he can bring, one for peace, um, the peace that Jesus brings into our heart that you can't experience anywhere else that only comes from God, and then love, God's love in us through Jesus, the gift of love in Jesus, and um, so this morning we're going to light the last candle, which is the candle that represents Jesus, represents Christ's light shining. And um, as we, in our service last night, our candlelight service we had here talked about, as everybody lit each other's candles, we can pass on that light from Jesus to others and shine in the dark places um, through Jesus. And so this morning, we're going to light the candle, and then afterwards, Pastor Aaron is coming to give us his Christmas message. All right, I'm going to mention a couple things because in your bulletin 
It says there's a special song. We're going to sing it at the end of the service. So um, we're going to finish, as you can see, and we're going to celebrate communion together. Also, uh, just to make things clear, we are not going to have um, our prayer meeting on Wednesday evening this week. So make a note of that. Turn to Luke chapter 2. We're going to read verses 8 through 14. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. While you're turning there, I just would like to say thank you to you as a church for all that you've done for uh, me and my family this Christmas season. You've been very kind to us. Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Can we just take a moment to pray? Our Father, we come to you. We, cre we humbly ask that your, your Holy Spirit would be with us right now and help us as we look to your word. Help us to take something away this morning that would be good for our soul. Lord, we pray that you'll be with us in every part of this service. Amen. So for a text, these words, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men, and Pastor Eric just finished, um, he just lit the, the final candle here, and that's kind of where we are. How often does, does Christmas Day fall on Sunday? Um, it's not that often, but here we are today, and, and we're reaching the pinnacle of the Advent season this morning, on this day, um, Christmas Day, the celebration of the coming our Savior. And we read this morning, just we read here in Scripture, the, the account of the angel's announcement. This, we read a little bit from the story of Jesus' birth. This is probably the most commonly read passage, Luke chapter 2. I, I memorized it from the time I was in kindergarten. Um, it's the story of Jesus' birth. In it are many, many texts that, are, that a pastor or a preacher could use on a Sunday morning, especially when it's Christmas Day. But for today, I've chosen that, that verse 14, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I think sometimes, I don't know, maybe, maybe I accuse people of this too much, but we're, we're just, we just live, we live our life. And, and we, it's Christmas time, and Christmas is exciting, for maybe more for some than others. I understand that uh, probably Nala would be the most excited about Christmas this morning. I don't know. But um, it's an exciting time. It's a time when we get together with friends and family, and we celebrate, and we exchange gifts. And I, I heard on the radio last Monday... So, so at the beginning of this week, the lady said, now if you're working on, or if you're going to do your last minute Christmas shopping, and I thought, it's Monday, what is she talking about, right? So there's always that aspect of, of Christmas, but we, we lose sight of the fact, I'm afraid sometimes, not just, uh, we just talked about Jesus' birth, but the impact, what it really means and, and I think we can find in this simple announcement some things to see and help us understand. Um, for what we just read was an account of when Jesus was born, there were shepherds. And, and we, we even see the Christmas program. We did, we did one last Sunday. We're talking about Christmas and, 
talk about the shepherds and, and oh, I see a light, and then there's the angels. And, and there's a certain significance in the fact that there was a whole host of angels singing probably like music like we've never heard for just a few shepherds in the field. They were, there was no significance to them in, in worldly terms at least. But the angels didn't appear to Herod or to Caesar or to the high priest even in, in Jerusalem. They came in on a hillside before a few, not very many even, a few simple shepherds, they sang a heavenly cantata. And, and it seems like it, it doesn't even make sense. Simple shepherds in the middle of nowhere, all of a sudden there's these angels that appear from heaven singing. But the message that they gave wasn't just for the shepherds that, that night. In fact, that message had more of an impact on the world than just about any other thing, um, any other event, if you will. Now, I'll qualify that just a little bit, and I'll, I'll explain that in just a minute, okay? But simply speaking, the Lamb, um, the Lamb of God, was being brought to earth through a simple um, young lady in a manger in Bethlehem. And the angels were there to announce it. And in this simple verse, I, I see three points because, uh, you know, I'm a pastor and that's what we do. We find <laughs> the three points, right? But really, there's significance in, in this one verse that we read. It starts with glory to God in the highest. And, and we hear those words and we think, well, of course, glory to God in the highest. Who else is there glory for like that? And Jesus is being born but the Amplified says it like this, highest heaven, that's, that's what it says, it's glory to God in the highest heaven where the angels dwell, where the holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come, is constantly heard over and over. That's what the highest means. In the throne room of heaven, the highest heaven, when this baby was born in, in a stable, with just a couple, a, a young couple there, and animals. In the throne room of heaven, the greatest glory that had ever, had ever been known was being celebrated at that moment. Why? Because this is possibly the most important part of God's plan for mankind, and it was being set into motion. It wasn't just a baby. It wasn't just a royal baby. It wasn't just a baby who was even the God-man. But it was the God-man who was being born into human history to die. The lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world had stepped into time. Out of the courts of heaven... And there he lay in the arms of basically a sweet young girl. And although it appeared to be a scene like many other such scenes, this time this baby being born and laid in the arms of a young mother, it was a singular scene in human history. For God, as a helpless child, was now among men. And that very thing is what brought glory to God in the highest. But then the angels went on to say, and on earth, peace. Now, in the original languages, this word earth would signify the whole globe. So it wasn't just peace to the local area, or it wasn't just peace to a certain nation. But what the angels were saying is, this baby has been born into human history, and it's not insignificant. It's 
the very God-man, Emmanuel, God with us, being born. This is part of God's plan from the foundation of the world. And I'm not, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this is, this is beautiful when you look at it. The whole world is hearing the, the theme proclaimed, peace. Now, over a hundred years ago, in World War I, there, there was a war being fought, obviously, in Europe. And there was a front that was 500 miles long. It went from the English Channel to the Alps. And at places, the front was only 50 yards wide between the two trenches. These were men who were in ditches trying to kill each other. And yet, on Christmas Eve, suddenly, as in the midst of all this fighting, the words to silent night, holy night, in German, rang out. And those soldiers on each side began to sing together, and they came out of the trenches and laid down their arms and celebrated the birth of the Savior together. And that night, peace reigned for more than 500 miles. And it continued for most of two days. And that's a neat story. But the sad part is, when it was over, the war resumed. So how is it that peace on earth has been proclaimed? The significance of the entrance of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, into human history is that God became man to have a personal relationship with people, with each one of us. And in so doing, He brought peace to the hearts of people one at a time, individual hearts. I read about Beverly Caradine, and, and he got it on his heart where he was pastoring. He wanted to build a church building. It seemed an unlikely thing. It's not that he had um, polished services and, and this rich congregation. He did not, but he had a vision and a prayer. And, and a man who was a wicked man came to him and put down, he said, put me down for $500 to build this church. And this man who was not a church man gave his tools and his horses and, and, and his wagons and he gave land for the church and then he gave another $1,000. Now this would have been in the 1800s, so that's a significant amount of money that he put up $1,500. Here's the beautiful part of this story. The church was built and that man was converted while he had been a wicked man and he gave, as a sinner, he gave his heart to Jesus. And the testimony that Beverly Caradine gave was that he died with great peace. Why? Because Jesus came and brought peace to the world. But he didn't do it by changing nations, but he changes the heart of one person at a time. And he brings peace to my heart. And if you allow him into your heart, he brings peace to your heart. Christianity is always conquered by changing the hearts of people. Whenever Christianity took up the sword and rallied an army, Christianity was not Christianity anymore. No, peace on earth comes to all of the world, and that word also includes all that is in it, and that's you and I. So this peace is offered to every person who is alive and has lived. 
But let, let's talk about this goodwill to men for a moment. For it seems like I spoke to somebody, and I think I mentioned this last week, but I, I was in a store, and I, I know I, I was wearing my work clothes, and, and the lady said, are you Mr. Saul? Because I worked for Saul Construction. I said, no. She said, or she said, Saul. She said, that's a, that's a Spanish name. And I said, it's also a Jewish name. And she said, well, I didn't know that. And I said, well, in the Bible. It, and, and she said, I don't like the Bible. She said, it, all the condemnation and fire and brimstone. And she sees a God who has disfavor with man. But the reality is that this goodwill means having favor. I want you to think about that where the world had just seen 400 years of darkness in relation to God, God said, the time is now. When the fullness of time was come, God sent his son into the world. And that's why we, we mentioned last night um, in our candlelight service, we, we read some scripture about light and the light dawning in darkness and how the world was a dark place. And the, the world was possibly at its darkest moment. And, and we, we might think, oh, it's very dark right now. But the reality is the light has shined and it still shines. But when Jesus came, the, the Isaiah said the world was in gross darkness, terrible darkness. And then a light shone. Somewhere on the hills of Judea that night, there were angels singing to a few shepherds. There was a baby being born in a lowly stable in a little town. But in all of those seemingly insignificant event, events, a light was dawning. And it's a light that was to all the world. And it's a light that was given from God because he has favor, favor toward men. God was and he still is showing his favor to man. And we might look around and say, how is this God's favor? And yet at the same time, when it seems like we hear about things that, that can be so awful. And, and we can say, where is God in all of this? God is, is giving of himself and has given of himself because he has favor toward man. Now, it's true that it's with, within our power. God has given us choice. Why did God give us choice, by the way? <laughs> this isn't in my notes. But I think it's important that we understand that God gives us a choice to choose His way. But when we, and, and the reason He does that is because we're the only creature that we know of that is in this position. In other words, we read the Bible and there are angels who are constantly in His presence. And it seems odd to us, but it's true that some of those angels even then did fall out of pride and willfulness. But we're in a position where if we're going to choose God in his favor, we're actually going against the spirit of the world around us. And so we choose, we don't just choose to not rebel against God, but we have to make a positive choice to allow God into our lives. And that means that we have a different kind of relationship with God than any other creature that's ever been created will have. While it seems difficult at times, it's also a high privilege to be one of God's creation that has the opportunity to avail ourselves of this gift, this light, this favor, that we can be one with God and we can know Him and He knows us. 
So God was and is still in the advent of Jesus Christ showing his favor to man. I, and I believe that whenever our hearts are turned in that direction and we, um, we choose to give our hearts and our lives over to him and, and live in his favor, that his favor always rests upon us. Listen, whenever, whenever you're seeking God, and, and it's why the, the Bible says, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Go his direction and he comes yours. He wants to be in your life. He wants you to love him. He wants you to be right with him. And so whenever you turn that direction, even when it's confusing, even when it's hard to understand, even when we don't have all the answers, even when things are going on that, that just broadside us in life, God is there showing his favor helping us. He's in our corner. His grace, His mercy, His peace is available to anyone who opens his heart to it. And God sent Jesus to live and to preach and to teach and to be our example and then to die and be risen from the dead to make a difference in humanity. We, we live in a society that seems more and more to be drifting away and, and actually ridiculing these kinds of beliefs. But I believe that it's God's presence in our world today that saves us from absolutely destroying each other. And Jesus, if we, I, don't, I don't think we could even fully grasp, but if we stop and we look at the last 2,000 years, John thinks he's going to be pretty old when he's 90. It's a drop in a bucket, isn't it, John? 2,000 years of history that is completely influenced by this one man, the God-man who made an entrance into time, Jesus Christ. This Christmas, hear the message that the angels gave to the world on a quiet night outside of Bethlehem. Glory to God in the highest heaven. The advent of Jesus on earth was a significant event in the highest heaven and in human history. In fact, I, there will be three significant events in human history, at least in this this part in which we live. The, the first would be that, that God himself came down to earth and made the things that we see and made us. This is the second. And, and I, I wish I, I had the language to help us understand the significance of the fact that God himself stepped into human history because he loved us. He loved men and women, humanity. This wasn't just another prophet who came to help us be better people. This was God himself saying, I'm going to take on humanity so I can walk and talk and live and be the example, yea, even be our high priest and, and our king. And then... He said, it is expedient that I go away, but I will send the Comforter. You see, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus that is in every man and every woman who is a child of God. It is Jesus through the Holy Spirit walking with each one of us today. And Jesus walked the earth 2,000 years ago. That's the second significant event. Event. The third one will be the return of Jesus Christ. And we need to be ready for that. But we can be because we have God in his favor with us. 
Jesus brought heaven and earth together. He opened a channel of communication between God and man that remains open through the Holy Spirit to this day. Peace. Peace on earth in the hearts of men because God Himself looks down with favor on men. He extends mercy to each one of us even though he, he extends mercy and favor to us even when we're sinners. Even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What mercy is that? That he gives grace and mercy and extends his favor to us even while we reject him because he wants to bring peace to our hearts. Do you have peace? Do you want peace? Do you want to open your heart to the Prince of Peace? You can today on Christmas Day. If you're not right with God, you can be made right with Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. And it's not that it has to be a hard thing because we are walking in His favor extends mercy and grace to us yet today. Before we leave, and uh, we're going to do this together, I want us to stand if you are able. We're going to be here for a few minutes, so if you're not able, that's okay. You can remain seated. We're going to celebrate communion together as a way of honoring this day Jesus was born. I usually have my um, my book up here that tells me what to say and what to read, and I left it on in my study kind of on purpose. Um, I just want us to join our hearts together this morning as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We'll also honor him in his death because we know that he didn't stay there. All right, so, <clears throat> Brother Eric, you come, Pastor Eric. And if, if you would like to partake, this is, um, if you would just exit your row, your right, <laughs> my left, um, and come around the front and then find your seat again, and we'll go row one, two, three, or four, however many we have. So, um, we can begin on this side. And you're going to come around and you're going to receive the fruit of the vine and the bread. We'll exit to your right. And you can just go on across if, and then this row and then we'll go to row two.
right, let's pray together for a moment. Our Father, we come to you on this Christmas day as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. We pray that you'll help us as we go through this day to remember what it's about. We pray that you'll help us as we celebrate not just your birth, but your death and your resurrection through these sacraments that we're about to partake of. Lord, we pray that you'll help us to help it to be real to us. Help us to understand that you made a, a, an incredible impact in human history by stepping out of heaven and into our world and representing your love to us. In your name we pray, amen. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and he gave thanks and he brake it and gave it unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Let's partake. And then let's pray once again. Lord Jesus, one more time we want to thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, help each one of us who are here this morning who have taken a physical representation of your sacrifice. And Lord, help it to be more than just something that is from grapes and, and, and bread that's been baked. But help it to be something that reminds us that you are and you are real and you came to earth as a baby and you lived and you walked among us, and we have a record of the words that fell from the lips of God, and they speak to us. Lord, we pray that it doesn't end there for us, but that you'll bring your peace into our hearts. Help us to remember the, the significance of the entrance of, of you into this world. Lord, we pray this Christmas morning that you'll be with us and your Holy Spirit will abide with us and bring your peace. We pray that you'll go with us, keep us safe as we go our different ways throughout this week and we celebrate with friends and family and we pray that you'll bring us together again according to your will, that it will be done. In your name we pray it, amen. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you for your attendance this day. You are dismissed. God bless you.